He's an engineer, superlative. He's a physician, superlative. He's a, a flight surgeon, superlative. He's a jack of all trades. Doug's drive and intelligence and it's just his breadth of so many fields is incredible. That's what awes and intimidates me is just how he's the master of so many different disciplines. And all of the students I had over all those years, Doug stands out from the rest um, uh, in uh, the way he was and the way his careers uh, developed. I was born and raised in, in Calgary. Uh, played hockey here, went to school here. We had our own machine shop and we built all sorts of stuff. And uh, uh, so I sort of grew up around that. We copy you down, Eagle. I took everything apart. Anything came in the house. I took apart our brand new color TV um, two days before Neil Armstrong walked on the moon. And my dad was so upset with me. He just, he, <laughs> I got it back together. But you know, it took me a while to get the colors right. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, thank God it was black and white on the moon. He was a very memorable character. So uh, there's many tales that come to mind when you ask about Doug. It was rumored that the, the John Belushi's Animal House was fashioned after uh, Doug's house in Edmonton. His artwork was a pancake nail to the wall. Oh, it was probably some of the best years of my life. I lived two years in residence. I helped John uh, use microprocessors to control the laser that went into the OR. And really, microprocessors were just brand new back in those days. Uh, currently, we have a, the U of A has a program, the Cross has a program to use the same technology that, help, that Doug helped to found uh, for treating uh, prostate cancer. It was just a unique opportunity. It really was. And, uh, and it's not a lot of places in the world that allow you to have such a diverse education. So I did sort of an MD-PhD program and finished that and did my residency and it was around the time of my residency is when I went into the competition to become an astronaut. I got to the final 20, but that, uh, that Hosehead Hatfield beat me out. Doug has contributed uh, in many ways to the, the space program. In 2009, Canada had the opportunity for its first long duration expedition aboard the International Space Station. Doug Hamilton, was selected as my flight surgeon. About two months into my flight, myself and one other crew member began to notice that um, we had difficulty reading on orbit. Bob calls down and says he can't read the Red Book. And that's really serious. The Red Book are the emergency procedures. They're in 12-point font. My crewmate and I do an ultrasound on, on our eyeball uh, with uh, verbal guidance from the ground. Never done this before in my life. They had what's called papilledema, which is the swelling of the optic disc which is classic in, in raised intracranial pressure. So the big issue right now is what's causing intracranial pressure to be elevated in, in astronauts. And, and Doug and several other people are, are continuing to work on, on, on that uh, scientific research to figure out what's going on there. And in addition to being technically brilliant, he also has the heart of humanitarian. Doug volunteered to be the lead physician to provide medical care to these thousands of people displaced from Louisiana in the Houston Astrodome. Does anyone need urgent 911 help? So I was with the Red Cross trying to set up 20,000 beds when they came 12 hours early. We had no support whatsoever. Those people had been uh, basically stranded in the Superdome in the convention center for five days. The temperatures were about 100 degrees with 100% humidity and no food, no water, it was terrible. There are 25,000 people in this structure who almost died and now we have to clothe them and wash them and feed them and take care of them medically, uh, give them their medications. Uh, daunting task, it was incredible. The work he has done that I think will be recognized uh, historically is the tele-ultrasound work for obtaining ultrasound in environments where there's no other way to do it. I want to actually prove that the concept is clinically valid, statistically uh, as effective as a standard ultrasound exam, and do it in a rural environment here in Alberta. Also deploy base stations up in northern Canada. He has um, accomplishments that many people would retire on and uh, uh, be proud of and when they're on the beach relaxing. I think Doug's greatest work is still to come. Congratulations on your award, your recognition at the University of Alberta. I respect you, you hoser.